Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, Shadow Broker released yet another set of exploits that it claimed to have stolen from the NSA. Friday's release focused on Windows, with some of the exploits targeting recent and still in support versions of Windows. One exploit that initially looked particularly dangerous was Eternal Blue because it claimed to affect uh, modern versions of Windows up to version 8 and enabled a remote compromise via SMB. Luckily, Microsoft did release a patch for the underlying vulnerability in March. So if you applied March updates, then you should be okay. All other vulnerabilities released also had received patches from Microsoft, some of them also fairly recently. Now, I'm guessing here a little bit more than I usually like to on this podcast, but my assumption is that after it became obvious that these exploits had been leaked, that the NSA did notify Microsoft about the potentially leaked exploits and that way Microsoft had a chance to fix them. As part of Microsoft's March bulletin, however, it did not indicate that these vulnerabilities were already being exploited in the wild or that exploit code had been released for these issues. There was actually no attribution at all in this case where Microsoft learned about these vulnerabilities. Now, not every researcher that reports vulnerabilities to Microsoft does want to get acknowledged, but uh, this also very much reaffirms the theory that Microsoft did get a heads up about these vulnerabilities from the NSA. Now, we had a lengthy discussion internally about whether or not to raise the Infocon level over this particular release. In the end, we decided against it, even though we were going forth and back a couple times on that. So it wasn't really a very straightforward decision in any way. What made a difference for me is that first of all, there's a patch available for a month now. And secondly, in order to be vulnerable, you have to have SMB exposed. Also, you have to have SMB version one enabled. While SMB version one is calmly still enabled, so uh, that wouldn't really be a big issue if that would be the only requirement. Having SMB open to the internet, uh, that's highly unlikely. And that in combination with not being patched does open you up to a number of other vulnerabilities as well. So uh, this particular exploit doesn't necessarily make things much worse for you. Now, the second part really to this exploit uh, was also a pretty interesting covert channel that goes on the name of Double Pulsar. What's different about Double Pulsar is that it actually uses SMB as a covert channel. And while this sounds somewhat unusual, given that the exploit really only works if you have SMB exposed, using SMB as a covert channel kind of makes a lot of sense because you already have SMB accessible to the victim's system. Now, in order to run this covert channel, a daemon is installed on the victim system that will respond to particular SMB messages. There is a little uh, ping implemented to check if a system is already compromised. This ping does use a trans2 session setup. Trans2, that's a short for transaction2 subcommand extension. And the normal response that you would get back is either a not implemented or an error message. Depends a little bit on the version of Windows you are running. Now, if the system is not compromised, the multiplex ID returned as part of the response is 65 or in hexadecimal 401. If the system is compromised, then it will respond with an 81 or hexadecimal 51. So if the system is compromised, then the exploit will not run. Instead, it will just connect to the back door that's already implemented. If you're worried about uh, being the victim of any of these attacks, uh, there is a simple scanner available that will scan a host using these SMB commands to check if the back door is already installed. 
Also, back in March, when the vulnerability was originally patched, Sourcefire already released signatures for uh, this particular exploit. These signatures are now available as part of the registered rule set. So these are the free rules that you just have to register for. Well, that's it for today. Sorry for just talking about really one topic, but uh, we got a lot of questions about this. So that's why I wanted to spend a little bit more time on this. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.